you amp game fuel. The Welcome back to the home series game final. Game we're getting ready to get into it. And Joe, we were looking through the stats during that quick break. And the first three maps, at least within this, look good for kind of each team. When you take a look at the first map in Cave, six and two for Minnesota, four and two for Florida. It's their best hard point. And it really kind of keeps that trend throughout the first three, at least. So I think it's going to be fun. We're going to see teams on their strong maps battling it out. Yeah, I think really the the only thing that sort of stands out is Florida's 1-0 on Piccadilly, and it's today, right? They, they go to around 11, so maybe they're just trying to switch it up, right? Switch up those map vetoes. We know how well of a team, like, prepped uh, Minnesota can be, so maybe they were preparing for another map. You throw that curveball in there. And we you know, looking at the keys to victory for Minnesota, keep up the organization, which they've been, they've been play, not flawless, but they've been playing so well as a unit and to make Florida play at their pace. Uh, that is the, I think how they beat FaZe, right? Like they make them play at their pace. They're good at dictating the pace on the map. Can they continue to do that here against Florida? Now let's look at the Florida keys to victory, what they can do to find success. And uh, Mox needs to play well. I mean, he's the X factor in the sense he hasn't been a standout in this game as the previous title where he was the main AR. Uh, we did see, I think it was uh, Gunrunner Dom yesterday where he, I think, pulled out the main AR. Skies was running around the MP5 a bit, so maybe they flip-flop. We'll try and keep an eye out throughout the course of the series. But, yeah, I think if they're going to win this, Mox has got to, he's got to be good. He's got to. Well, I, I mean, of, of course. But I, I guess the only thing that helps Florida is these teams play pretty similar, right? Like, they like AR-based maps. That's why we're going to Cave. Yeah. I mean, if you want to talk about that point, the key to victory, I guess it's map three, St. Petro. But again, both of these teams very solid on that domination. I don't know. I, I think this is a, a very good matchup for both of them because you're going to have the similar play styles in, in between it. And yeah, I like that key to victory for Minnesota. Play at your pace. But what does that mean? You have to continue to slay. When you're going to slow down the game, when you're going to play around those main ARs, they have to slay. And we are going to have a duel on our hands. We know how good skies and mocks can be. So it's going to be fun to watch yeah. these ARs go at so it. So it's less making Florida play your pace since they like to. It's more just playing to your strengths. Just, yeah. just, just do what you've yeah. been doing. You've been so great at it. And if the ARs are going to be playing at that level with God or X and Assault, I mean, skies is going to have his hands full. And we know talent-wise he's capable of doing it, but here we are. It's a home series final. And uh, last time, obviously, they fall a little bit short, but maybe not quite as high level of competition this time around. But with the way Rocker are looking today and this weekend... Uh, this, uh, this should be a fight. I'm excited to see it. Cause it's just, it's cool. Is it the final we thought it was going to be? No, said that multiple times, but it's always awesome when someone's going to be crowned a winner for the first time. It's just interesting stuff. And I think both of these teams just sort of play scrappy, right? They just, the, the, their games, their matches are usually longer. A lot of game fives between both of these teams. And I, I think because of that, they fly under the radar a little bit. I know we've been talking a lot about Minnesota, but neither of these teams typically do it in in a dominant way like they grind these matches out and they come out on top well it, it's cool for us too though because i would say of our cast that we've had so far joe who's your favorite team to commentate <sighs> i mean i would say rocker. i mean minnesota's had yeah, some yeah, great, exactly. great games I, yeah I, crazy I, games i would yeah. say rocker just for for us the maps that we've had some of the the nutty maps the ties the 250 249 wins the the, the comeback win the, the crazy situation they have with empire last what in LA, like they've had so many insane maps. I want more. Rocker, you, you've had wild situations. I want to see more of it. Uh, the players just kind of getting in, testing the servers, making sure we're all good to go before we get into it as we take a shot. I take a look at the shot of the players, but I also want to highlight and go through kind of how these teams got here. Uh, it's interesting because they both get here by, you know, dropping that match inside a group play, with it being like a mini double elimination group. They drop that first match, they're the second seed going in. They play the favorite team. They're both able to get the win, and now they're here. Well, and they stay hot. I mean, look at Florida, right? Like, your first day, you, you lose to Toronto. And I think everybody was sort of, like, scratching their head. Uh, yeah. And they had to bounce back. But, but... And I'm sorry to cut you off. Wasn't the same thing the last time they got to a final, wasn't it? We passed it. it was London yeah, that's what I said. Them. Yeah, they did. They did. The, they did the exact smoked same them. thing smoked in Atlanta. Them. But like, it, it was the same thing to a T in, in which we were casting it. And I think you picked them at that event on hard points to come out of groups. And I was laughing at you. I was literally laughing at you after that first yeah. series. I was like, no, this is this is not going to happen. Like they just got torched, and then they find a rhythm as the tournament goes on and. And here they find themselves yet again. It's nuts. Yeah, in Minnesota, you, you take a look at this graphic. They do something similar. Huh? They get 3 bops like very fast. And we're like, wow, Chicago is here to make a statement. But then they get out of groups. They're, you know, they get that rematch against uh, Dallas Empire. You saw all of them after the game. Revenge, revenge. They wanted it. Uh, they, they, they were bringing the heat. 
So yeah, both of these teams do it in a, in a similar way. And it's great too, with like the format of these tournaments and the fact that you, we only have 12 teams versus maybe like a 16 team or more league in the past. Like the, the storylines that continue to grow as these guys have matchups event to event and we get to see it build as the year goes on. That revenge storyline, it's sweet so far, but can they get the W is the big thing. Yeah, that is uh, the big thing, right? Who, who's going to be our, our fourth winner of the year? I think that's just what I'm most excited about. You know, you have those four teams. And after this, those teams will start to meet up. And who's going to who's gonna be the first multi-winner of the year? Who, who's going to win their second one? It's going to be a fun year. Well, before we get into it, I do want to highlight how the Challengers League is playing out, guys, because uh, it, it's going to be a little bit different because we're going online, obviously, for the Pro Series. The same is going to be here. Uh, there were some announcements that came out from the CDL as we led into this, but as this tournament is going on, over 600 teams also competed from around the world for the $15,000 prize pool this weekend. And that's not it. I mean, there were a bunch of Call of Duty Challengers Cups that were announced uh, for North America, Europe, APAC. It's a total of $250,000, Joe, that these guys are going to be fighting for as the year goes on. Uh, it's it's nuts. I think we have one coming up, I think, next weekend. It's next gonna weekend. Be the Challengers Cup. $50,000 so yeah, on uh, the it's line. It's a big one. You can sign up at CallofDutyLeague.com if you're trying to get involved in it. But I know uh, I know it's a, it's a tough transition and pivot for everybody involved with it going online, but in a way from a prize pool standpoint and the ability to compete without traveling for some of these challengers teams. I, I personally think it's huge for them. Yeah. Another opportunity for those guys right, right below the, the pro level to make a name for themselves, to continue to cement themselves, maybe give themselves an opportunity. We already saw what gorillas did, right? They pick up three very young, talented players. We'll see how they evolve, you know, inside the league and, who knows what happens after these Challenger Cups? You know that some teams are going to want to make some ch uh, team changes. Yeah, I think you, you nailed it. Like the moves you've already seen this year to these 12 franchise teams with the uh, yeah, Mac as well, the subliners, like you're seeing these guys move up. It has to be an extra motivation just to know that I can do it. This is the dream. I want to be on a pro team. I want to have that salary. I don't want to be fighting tournament prize pool to prize pool to pay my rent. Like I want to be solidified as one of the best players in the world and know from a financial standpoint, a future standpoint, I'm okay. Maybe not a future standpoint because who knows you get yeah. dropped at any point, but <laughs> to get to that level. Cause a lot of times for most players, it, it's like once, once you get there, Joe, like once you get that foot in the door and get on a top team for the most part, like a high percentage of players, like you're in the mix now you're, you're in. Yeah. Yeah, right like you said you're in the mix like maybe you get a chance it doesn't go too well but typically after that you get multiple chances or you know you're in a circle for long enough so maybe one of those players will pick you up on the team but yeah like you said once you're there usually you're there for a good while yeah from what i understand next we're going to be taking a look at a, a minnesota watch party i don't know how that's going to be uh, that it's going to be functioning maybe over discord or something or team speak as we are in a quarantine but i'm curious what they're up to let's take a look at this Uh, I, b I believe. Okay. Oh, sorry. We we I can't see it yet because we're uh, we're waiting for it to actually pop up <laughs> oh, for us, going. Joe. As we have a little bit of a delay. I thought it was a video we were throwing too, but uh, they're they're getting into it. Uh, getting into it now. Um, but it's cool. I mean, we've seen but before. Obviously, the quarantine, the global pandemic. You saw a lot of watch parties. They were doing how the fans were getting behind them. It was one of the. It was one of the first things that we saw. Oh, so it isn't a video. It was just a graphic. So Joe, I'm 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 all over the okay. place. I'm I'm absolutely all over the okay, place. Okay, so it is on Discord. Now we can read the read the graphic. Yeah, oh, we were a little confused. That's what I it think is. it's one of those. Yeah, I thought I was throwing we a video to, piece showing them. I'm like throwing to videos, right? Yeah, the Minnesota yeah, Rocker like, done where? before. But how, how are these hey, guys hanging if, out? If you're a Minnesota Rocker fan and you want to party with some Minnesota Rocker fans, you join that Discord and you have some fun in this final. Well, that is one of the differences of our current production setup where I'm trying to see where we're going. Yeah, yeah I started the video and I was like, I don't know if we're throwing to a video. I am an, I am an idiot. But uh, no, the Rocker yeah, fans, no. we know how passionate they've been from the get-go to kick off the league. They took on that pressure to kick things off at the Armory, the very first event. And I think that is where a lot of people were sold on this franchise model. Just hearing them, you know, all in the past years, you, you hear, you know, it's just it's, the fans are behind your optic gaming. But we get there. The fans were behind Rocker. They were booing everybody else. It was very, very cool to see. And what what's, uh, what sweeter reward can they get than a, than a win here? Yeah, and I, I think they have to be pretty happy, right? Going back-to-back -back finals. Uh, I think if you're a Rocker fan, you are very happy. But can you capture the W? That is the big question. And, and Maven, the first map of 
this series is getting loaded in. Home series final for Dallas, baby. We're going to have a new winner. This team, in my opinion, cementing themselves as the fourth best team in the game, or at least in the top four conversation as we go forward. Rocker, Mutineers, Cave Map 1. A reminder, Rocker, 6-2 and two on this map and mode. Mutineers, 4-2 and two on this map and mode. It is their best hard point. You've got strong ARs, and we're starting off with the new guy, Pharaoh. Well, I'm sure we'll see a lot of F3s, F3s in the chat as Pharaoh starting his work his way up. Havoc, Frosty, and Skies were all able to get some opening kills. He's just trying to shoot the big toe of Sally right now, or Silly. Sally! As he gets taken down. So, yeah, I'm so used to saying Sally, but anyways, to Silly. <laughs> uh, he's but the contest is going down in Florida. Yeah, I know. I know he is. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> well, Florida right now, just making sure they rotate on over and hold those spawns. That's why that's Joe's super sucks. He's, uh, he's a big supporter. Of the Merc Militia. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but Pharaoh just on his belly as everyone from Rocker starts to work through cave. They want to work on this flip. And pinching from back outpost is going to be silly as well. Everyone vying for position to rack up this time in our next money hill. The trades seem to be going the way of Rocker and who else? But it's got Rex and Assault have been the dynamic duo leading the way thus far. A seam swarms into the mix as well. And the spawns right now look good for Rocker. There is a pinch opportunity though, but between Havoc. And Pharaoh to maybe make a play. But Havoc's going to get picked up by a scene of the Yeah, we talked about Havoc, what he was able to do last year is he was trying to sneak his way through. Silly, though, he's the man for the rocker that were able to flip those spawns for KV. Now he's inside a hill, the hill. But Pharaoh mocks Havoc already there. But Alex, as he takes down two, this should be more time for the Minnesota rocker. They're still spawning in the back. They haven't been able to get in just yet. No, it's been good for me. I mean, Florida, yeah, Florida has done fantastic. great. Didn't allow Rocker to get set up and get comfortable. Four are going to fall for Rocker. Assault the last man here in a position to do anything. And the final 15 or so seconds going to go to Mutineers. That'll prompt the rotation from Rocker. But that was, I mean, that's some of the fewest points you're going to see tallied on KV. It's like no one really got we, We've a lot seen of that, that a lot this weekend though, right? Like we've seen teams just be able to, to sort of handle that rotation. Not allow those teams to get that much time. And I just think it comes with that first set of kills yeah. as soon as that hill and, pops. And it's like even you have the quote-unquote position in the early rotation if you're there early to make it messy like it's not a big deal it's, it's like it's only when like all five get set up there's clearance across the map and they've got a position they have time to get in all power positions but they never got a chance to get comfortable but as we look at it got our x now 11 and 6 on a four straight three three i think coming in from a seam as well before he drops but frosty havoc pharaoh all burst on through it's two for havoc with 30 seconds remaining on the hard point they're trying to soak up some time. Unfortunately for them, it's old Silly Sally. He gets through it. Yeah, Silly answers that up. Mox up top does get taken down. Onto this rotation assault. He is going to have his hands full, and he gets taken down by Pharaoh. So there's four players from Florida inside. Back at the old hill. Alex was able to take down Frosty. Gets that scrap time. He will set up the pinch. You see a seam coming down the well right now. He gets covered. So the Florida set up right now. They are not allowing anybody in. So far, so good. Off out of the third person cam as they look to get the push on in. It's Alex and Goddard X that get the picks. Havoc just laying prone inside the hard point. Asim knows he's there, but hasn't been able to get the angle. So Havoc's going to continue to take out players. Finally, as he beats, Asim takes him down. Another cave hard point where it's still tough for somebody to actually get into the point once the madness ensues. Nice job by Pharaoh Papadetti to try and get into position to get inside. It's got our X looking over it. He's trying to hold them out of the point. A smoke, yeah, great I, chaos. I, I mean, obviously, Minnesota, they would love to earn some time, but what's the next best thing to do what they're doing right now? Keeping Ford off it and containing them because you see on that mini-map, when we're going to rotate to our next hill at Cliff Path, you already have Alex and Assault all the way in the back. Silly able to find another three kills, and that is going to delay their push to the new hill for so long. That's going to be all dead. As Asim and Alex, they take care of those who are working up this side of the map. And look at your mini map. Look how far away Florida is right now. Yeah, this is a stronger setup. Almost what I was trying to refer to at KV. So they have time to get these power spots. They got back out of those control. You have eyes over Cliff's side with Alex waiting inside the point. Now it's going to be a five-man hit from Cliff. They're going to swarm on through. Can anyone hit shots on the cross? It seems the guy that tries to make the play as Assault continues to attempt the Logobra. 
But Mute Gears, once again, like three quick moves at least, they're able to get them out of the point, but it's enough time for Rocker to tie up this game. Okay, Silly was just on another five spree, so I feel like he's having a big game mode. We've seen a few triples out of him, then picks up the, the five spree. As you said, it's just so back and forth. Not a lot of time accrued for either side. Yeah. We, I mean, with two minutes off the clock, with, I, I mean, is this going to be one of the first games that maybe goes to that clock throughout this year? It, it may be. We'll have to keep our eyes on it. Do you think but it's the comes in? lackluster setups or more props to the team from the breaks? I guess props to the team on the breaks. I mean, I, I just think it comes down to those rotation gun fights. But even right there where Minnesota, they get five dead. They weren't able to accrue a, a ton of time. It wasn't like it was a clean 50, 60 points. Not even close, yeah. Right, they got the first 20, 20 or so clean. And then New Deer, once again, able to get in. Just taking a look at the scoreboard. Got our X, 19 and 13. It's just what we expect from him at this point. But Assault right behind him. He continues to have a great day. For the Florida side, I mean... Not a ton of slaying, but you're, you're keeping the, the game close. I mean, you, you have the lead. You, you have the lead. And like I said, we are down at 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So we will have to keep our eye on that. Yep. It was such a common theme back in Call of Duty World War II. We we're always keeping the eye on the clock on certain maps. Not really been a theme this year, but we'll keep watching it through this as we're through our first hard point and second set of locations. If you're new to hard point, it's predetermined points on the map. Cycle through all five or into the second set now and over to KV's rocker. It's gonna be their first again. Can I do a better time? Better job this time. Yeah, you see a seam, he's pushed out cave. So this will funnel Florida through the back and through this middle cave, which is typically what you want. This middle tunnel is so tough to push through. And there you're seeing the time starting to accrue for Minnesota. Skies, he's just waiting for his teammates to push on through, watching over him. And here they come. We're going to see Alex. He's just going to go rotate towards field for next hill. But a much better hold so far as four go down for Florida. <laughs> that's going to make it all five. Yeah, that's exactly what you want. But I think it was just due to a team's position early on. The fact that he's able to control the front of the hill, they know exactly where they're going to flood on through. Well, that and like they were using those smokes to try and just continue to funnel through there. But yeah, the smoke kind of helps you get in, but it just creates chaos. And one time a seam tucks in. You got to run out of it. But yeah, the next time, Silly. <laughs> Silly just runs into the smoke as well. I think he like chest bumps three players, gets a kill with a pistol. He just said, all right, you're going to throw the smoke. I'll use it as well. Solid hope, hope from Rocker. Now going to be a 30-point lead for them. The Mutineers have the position out in the field. I mean, this is a, a very good hold. We talk about a setup. This is a setup and a half right now. Nobody from Minnesota has even gotten close. And Frosty, he's starting to heat up on a three-spree right now. Snapping onto a team. Going to take him down. There is a trade. But like I said, we are 30 seconds off of this hill. And it's been 30 flawless seconds for Florida and another lead change may come through and think about what you said about the play clock you called it out at two minutes and 30 seconds only seven seconds have bleeded off of that because it hasn't been a contest fest it hasn't been people getting cleared out of the hard point now people finally getting solid holds and once rocker finally get one an immediate answer there from mutineers at field yeah, and they, they needed it, right? They, they needed that. I felt like Minnesota, their, their guns were starting to heat up. A couple of players going on, on a few sprees. But we'll see how will Florida attack this one. Havoc with nice shots onto a seam. It looks like they want to hit it from the east side of Cave. That's going to be three that go down. That's what I'm talking about. If one or two of those kills come in from Minnesota, that slows things down. But you see what happens. One player of the setup, they have to get off the hill. They have to you know, try to catch a timing. They don't catch those timings. And now guess what? Florida is here. Florida gets them off the hill. What is Florida doing so well that these entries seem so easy? It's not one kill, it's two, three, four that they get before Rocker gets on the board. I mean, they're just winning their one-on-ones. It's plain and simple. That's what it comes down to. And those one-on-ones are keeping them in the game. They're hanging on to this lead. Look at the bottom side of your mini-map. Yeah, you see a seam. Great job, OBS team. Able to catch this. Havoc versus a seam. The route man gets paid once again. Able to win that one-on-one. -on -one. And now it is Florida's turn to try to hold Cliff. Yeah, you saw that key rotation he had against Huntsman in a similar spot to close out the game. He's able to do it again there. Now, Rocker, last time through, the cliffside setup looked good. They got broken so quickly. What can Mutineers do? Can they get a solid setup? It's Havoc that's pushed up prone, tucked away in a corner. You have back outpost control as well. 
Dilly and Alex trying to hit it through mid, but Frosty with the triple shuts down that entire push in through caves. Five go down for Rocker, and this is a wondrous hold yet again from you here. Well, what was the difference between the pushes, right? For Florida, they just went a flip. They smoked it out, and they just flooded their way through. I think Minnesota, they try to three-hit the back. Frosty takes them all down, and it's almost a bit of a split push. And when you're splitting that way, you're staggering. You're slowing down. So that that's why this great holder comes through. Obviously, you have to have those big individual plays that Frosty was able to make. But now Florida just 27 seconds away from winning map one. And it feels like Frosty by himself just earned them 30, 40 points. Like that, that yeah, triple he did. was well, so he did. Yes. That triple was so huge from Frosty. Who in a new title in Call of Duty, trying to continue to make a name for himself over these last couple of years. He is an absolute unreal talent. 27 points away now our Mutineers, 60 needed for Rocker. And to our Ooh. third set of rotations now as the seam lights up the scoreboard. Yeah, seam's gonna find three. This is good time for Rocker, but we know what Florida wants to do. They wanna hang on to these spawns for Cave East. Frosty's gonna get taken down by Alex. That's gonna force number seven to back up. That skies with an M4. Alex just trying to stay alive. It wins another one. So guess what? Another player has to wrap back. So what Alex is doing right now, is this position great? Yes. But Florida, they have to worry about him. That opens up the time for Minnesota. So they could potentially tie this game up. And you still have Alex's position in the back. Found an M4, which will probably help him in his spot. Stunned up, but still up. Sim tech hits him as well. He actually gets double aided, I think, by Skies and his teammate to pick him out from the back. It's chaos around the hard point. It's silly trying to snap him. He can to pick up two. Not quite able to finish the second. From POV to POV to POV is no one able to get the hard point quickly. Now it's Alex that is able to get in. There's a team kill through for Rocker as well. Five point lead for Rocker. They have the control, but the close spawn that's still there for Mutineers. You can either team still able to win it on this point. Florida's got to go. They have to go. By the way, that was Goddard Rice's 40th kill he was able to find. Here comes Ooh. the push from Florida. Assault and a seamer here. Assault's going to find his second, trying to stay alive with the pistol, not able to snap on the skies. The big deal, though, they keep them trapped back there. Florida cannot win off of this scrap time. Now we're going to have a rotation over the field, and all of Minnesota is set up as a seam with the headshot on the Pharaoh. Just nine more seconds needed for Minnesota, and you see as we look over this Here next hard point, it is all Here purple. Go. Here they go. This is everything. Tie game. Each team needs nine seconds. The hard point pops. Alex comes in position inside yellow to make the play. He's going to take down two and nearly a third. And there's the final point rocker. Clutch up between Cave East and Field to get the map one win. But what a thriller to start this home series final. Just a couple of huge individual plays. When we go back to the middle of Village, that first hill, it was Asim who opened things up with three, but then it was Alex. Alex's continued pressure on the cliff path forced Florida towards the back. That allows Minnesota to earn some time. Then they can get together. They're able to get control of the hill. They slay out. They trap Florida in the back. That makes that rotation of soccer field so easy. Florida was nowhere close. They were, what, 20, 25 points away from closing that one out. But we talk about how fundamentally sound Minnesota is. You saw another example at the end of that hard point. The biggest standout in the stats for me when you take a look at this, guys at home, is the fact that leading the way on a map like Cave, you have your two ARs going off on the side of Minnesota. On the other mm -hmm. side, your subs are leading the way. You've got Frosty and Havoc with 30 plus. Skies, Mox, you have 26 and 23 kills respectively. Assault and God Rx, 42 and 32. Like they put up big games, massively positive. Plus nine for Assault, plus 13 for God Rx. The Assault Rifles dictated the map, but that was a tale of two halves. Like the first half was so scrappy. Yeah. You kept pointing at the clock. No one able to really get a foothold. The clock barely moved in that second half as teams got more comfortable and got the setups they desire. But what a map one, man. Nine point difference between these two squads is both fighting to get their first well, win. And I think you asked me, right? You asked me, like, what is making this so scrappy? And I think if you talk about Havoc and, and Frosty's performance, that's the answer. Because they were winning so many opening duels, right? That's what made Minnesota's rotations basically not turn into anything. So the subs going off, that's what happens when they do. But as you said, you need your ARs to step up. Goddard X and Assault on the other side shut them down.
Well, God RX was a beast. He drops 42 in the map. The scuff play of the game. Guess what? It's God RX. He has been lights out all year long, making a statement as one of the top players in the game from that flex position. He can do it with an MP5. He can do it with the M4. He's a special talent. Now, let's take a look at this scuff play of the game. And uh, yeah, it just comes in that first rotation. So he's been able to make plays. You just talk about how good he is with any weapon in his hands. And I mean, I know we touch a lot on this guy, but it just feels like you have to. He just always puts up numbers. He's always in the right spot to make those plays, and he does it again. But again, you know, the stats aren't everything in the sense of how many times did we see Asim with big multi kills? Asim was negative yep. 10. He was 22 and 32, barely any objective time. But in transition, when he needed some big ones, he had them. Like you saw the triples, you saw the doubles, and sometimes those multi kills, especially with the close spawns, they're everything. That is what gives you a chance to get that big break, get that big hold, get the setup you like. Maybe not uh, the prettiest game from a stats perspective, but he had some big moments for sure. It has been a team effort for Minnesota, despite the fact that we are highlighting the two statistical studs from that map one. And and I think the big thing when you look at Piccadilly, right? Both of these teams played it in the semifinal, but it was two different stories. And Florida was able to watch what Dallas was doing so well to shut Minnesota down. Florida was able to win a round 11 versus Chicago, and they threw some 2v4s away. So they had the advantage throughout that entire game. Where the other side, Minnesota, they just got smoked. So if you imagine Florida was watching this, maybe you can mimic some strats from Dallas and figure them out. I talked the rep as a coach of Rocker, and they are comfortable anywhere to search and destroy that God RX can make an impact with the sniper rifle. And this is a map that he is going to be able to do that. But as 30 seconds are off the clock, it's four versus four now. Half of the lovely shots. The ball is going to come off. The free aim comes in as well. Skies takes a fight on the other side. Copper is fired He's up, twisted, baby. bro. He is twisted. He knows it's home series final time. So you got our ex and silly in a two versus three bomb not yet planted in florida they're they're gonna have to push in the bookstore they're gonna find god rx silly able to take down mox though with that car explosion he's able to find another one but does get taken down in florida they find those early kills they take position they don't need to plant the bomb the final kill from having as he ends it he had a nice pick earlier in the round as well as they look to answer back and tie up this series 1-1. One, one. They can pull out the W, but it's a nice start there. At least through the first round. Now they'll get over to offense. Let's see what the Mutineer setup looks like. And again, because Florida was 0-0 zero zero on this map prior to today, there was not a lot for Minnesota to prep for. You know, what are their go-to strategies? We're, we're not exactly well, sure, and neither are they. And I think that's huge reason. What have we talked about a lot with this rocker team? Yeah, Preparation proud. and coaching yeah. staff. And yes, you did not have much time to do that at all. That, that's a good point, Joe. Early on, though, it's Minnesota. We're going to find that first blood. Force a 3v5. Skies out towards this B site. Going to back away. But as soon as you give up that position, that's going to open up the B site. Got a rice with that sniper. Not able to hit that shot. But here comes the push, and Skies, he follows up that sm smoke and has Frosty's help. I mean, it's a big he's able to get a kill. He looks like he was in such a tough spot, and then beams the on to Alex from a 3v5 to a 3v3. But Assault gives the numbers to Rocker yet again. Right back to an even battle, though, with the nice shots from Frosty. Two versus two. 30 seconds to go. Silly finds the pick, and now Skies, who made this around, is now the last alive at a 1v2. 20 seconds to go. Never want to see the pistol in hand. He's just looking probably out of ammo, trying to find any kind of gun that he can use. Bomb picked up by Rocker is they'll work the plant. He has three bullets. Yeah, that's the issue. How do you how do you play this? Oh, did you just hear oh. the alarms going off after <laughs> he's just trying to like play his life yeah. and sneak around, yeah. but he's he's stealing. He is stealing from the bookstore well, and they know yeah, it. He tried to steal the round as well, but yeah, I wish he had more ammo. I mean, maybe maybe he makes that play if he did. But he is the only reason Mutineers had a chance to win that. Just couldn't seal it with the secondary in hand. But that, again, it was a 3v5. I, in Minnesota, it just it felt like they were they were staggered in their pushes. They were not together. The trades weren't there. But 
They're able to seal the round. Silly, a big start, five and one from him. Bailed him out of the mid and late game. Havoc with another first blood, the insta snap and melt onto Silly. Lovely bit of playmaking ability from Havoc there. As Frosty just finishes the weak player on the cross, and you see why these guys are in a final. It's just beams after beams. Now Goddard X with his chance at a 1v2, still with the sniper in hand. Tons of time to work with, but he's been spotted and tagged up. Gets out with his life. He's trying to stay alive. But we saw one of those middle pushes. Typically, those don't pay off, right? We always talk about how hard it is to win an offense on this map. But both teams finding some su success early on. Got our X now in a 1v2. As dead silence. It's about to run out, though. Can he reset it? Can he find a kill? I don't think so. But he's going to find Moss. This should be an easy shot. Able to line it up. Spot Pharaoh as well. Spot Pharaoh with the pistol. Oh. Can he finish it? No, not able to connect the shots. Oh, and now in the last round, Skies, you wish you had ammo for the 1v2. Here for Goddard X, you wish maybe you had him four for the 1v2. As the pistol simply not enough to take down Pharaoh. He hit the first shot. He got the first bit of damage in, but Pharaoh, ice in his veins, wins the one on one. Another round. The Mutineers. Yeah, I, I just think he missed a few. I think that was it. I mean, we've seen players be pretty nasty with that pistol, but I don't think a few of those connect and gets well, taken down. Almost clutches that round. Goddard X rarely has to use it because he hits all his time. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> Havoc now with a sniper. The Able to connect one onto a C. I think he just shot it through the smoke as well. We saw him lining up. Moss is going to take down Silly. That's why we usually talk about those middle pushes Back. being so difficult. Woo! One player is just ready for it. Havoc continues. C finds his second of the round. Seven and two now. And we saw, I mean, it was Pharaoh that did it. What a Ramazo, where it's like, it's like round nine. No sniping going down. Then suddenly Pharaoh pulls it out and gets two kills. They haven't been relying on the sniper here. Havoc pulls it out and gets two kills. Mixing it up if you're the Mutineers, and so far it's paying off. Got our ex in a tough spot again, and he will drop. Mutineers looking so good against Rocker on what I think many would say is Rocker's strongest SP, or at least one of them. Yeah, one of them. Absolutely. I mean, we, we've seen them time and time again on this map. What did you say? What, three and one, I believe they were? That's what you said. Yeah, I believe uh, you three said and one, that. Yes. Three and one, yes. Havoc has well, probably, two first bloods yeah? now. Yeah, okay. See, I don't know if that accounts for their loss today against Dallas, but... Oh, that's true. It might not. It might not, yeah. Still, a stronger search and destroy map for them. And well, Havoc the playmaker. Throws the smoke out. Trying to make the play right through. It just does not care. He's going to spot a seam. Can't finish the kill. I think a few of those go through that wood post. And let me tell you, wood post and... <laughs> Or not your best friend sometimes. Well, instead of a third first blood for Havoc, it's a second on the board now for a seam is the entry players on both teams making the early impact. 5v3 for Rocker in a, a desperation round. They, they need to win massively here to make sure Mutineers don't run away with this. Last time they were in this spot, it was quickly a 3v3 because of Skies. He, does he, I don't think he knows that's a player. He's trying to spot Alex under the car. He knows there could be someone in that position. Lots of scene. That's when Ale Alex is going to pop up. Skies is ready for it, though. He reads it so well. Read him like a book. Like right that. outside of the bookstore. Trophy. Trophy out to make sure he can't get finished as he's weak. Now Skies is going to get dropped. Mox 1v3. So little time on the clock. He tries to soar out. Alex has his number. Rocker get the round behind the 5v3 start. Yeah, nice little nice little play here out of a seam. Yeah, you know, typically we, we see him with the MP5. On this map, he's rocking the M4. He finds the final three kills. But once again, it's just the number advantage. Just a little bit too much for Florida. That's the only way Rocker's been able to win rounds so far. They get the first two kills and they close it out. I don't know if that's going to be a recipe for success throughout this map too. But yeah, yeah, you'll take it. Seven and four now from the seam. Seven and four from Havoc on the other side. Either way. For their squads, respectively. Rocker, an all-out hit to A. Mox and Pharaoh, the two here to deal with this. 
Alex goes up top, gets caught mantling. There's a team kill, but it's not going to matter because they also take out three Brocker members as well. Yeah, I thought Minnesota was going to get the bomb down because you saw when Havoc was throwing nades, the trophy was just gobbling them up. But I think one of the players dealt with it. That smoke, it evaporates in. That's what happens with this bomb site. It's just so open where the defense, they just rotate over. Assault going to go for the plant, but that's going to be a 2v4. Farrell probably going to catch a timing. He will. It's all up to God RX, and <laughs> he's going to have to hit a lot of snipes yeah, if he I, wants to make this one happen. I think it's the third round. Well, that's a wall. Last alive. Yeah. It's not a door. I'm not alive anymore. Pharaoh on the defuse. An easy retake for the mutineers, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, everybody just drops. You see Alex try to mantle up to the top window. Maybe get a pick. He gets there a second earlier. A second. And I think he might line up too as they're coming up the steps. But the timing is off. He gets caught mid-mantle. No, I, I mean, it was a nice switch-up strategy for Minnesota, right? It's what we want to see. They go for that hit. It almost pays off. I think, yeah, you talked about Alex. If he gets into that spot and if the bomb gets planted, that's two big things that if they go the Minnesota way, maybe they win that round. Yeah, maybe he's thinking, I'm, I'm going to beat the one player there. We spotted, doesn't realize there's two. I'm not sure, but he falls. Pharaoh right up mid, and Pharaoh with the gunny. Silly. Out of this round. Havoc on the flank. A nice pick as well. That's not even through the flank. That's right through the front door. He's able to find Alex with the headshot. Hip fire takes him down. Another four versus two. I tell you what, Florida has just been flawless on offense. They really have. Again, how many times do we watch this and it feels Ooh. just like back and forth at previous events? Who's going to win the first offense? That's what we always talk about. Who's going to drop a D? So far throughout this game, Florida has won multiple offenses. It goes back to how they're breaking hard points. Just winning their early ones. <laughs> Even more impactful in a game mode like Search and Destroy. As they dominate the first bloods. One more round now for Mutineers. We're all square at one apiece in this final best of five in the Dallas Game Series final. Alex putting up a dud as of now. One in seven. Yeah, not having a great map, but I mean, Minnesota just overall isn't. Trying to work this B side, and here's the switch up. You do not see God RX with that sniper rifle. Maybe just felt like he was out of the play. How did the team play on offense? 100%. Wants to get into it a little bit more. Uh, we've seen so many first in this early action with that sniper on crosses. All of his kills have been like garbage kills or, or close to it. Like they've come when he's in this like 1v3, 1v3. This situation it seems unwinnable. He hasn't really been an impact or a force in the map whatsoever. And I think that's props to Mutant here. They've taken him out of the game. Guys, once again, playing that position, back pillars, puts a trophy on himself. Assault trying to stay alive, but guess what? It's Havoc. Havoc, Mr. Mid-Map, able to take him down. Now just waiting for his time to pounce. Frosty's going to spot that cross, and I like that. Just play the clock. Minnesota has to go. Mox able to find that. Silly does make this a 2v2. But he has to get the plant now, and this is just so difficult. It's looking like Florida is going to tie this one up one-to-one. -one. Pharaoh knows he has no time. He runs away. Pharaoh just tucked away. No way he's going to find him a flawless. Well, not flawless, but a very, very good win very from Mutant we uh, yeah. Mutineers. And so, so good on the offensive side of things. And Havoc, the entry man, 11-5. and five. First bloods all over the place throughout that map, too. That's a convincing victory. Uh, Alex couldn't get anything going for Rocker. He was 1-8. and eight. Got our X. Nothing, really, from a sniper standpoint. We saw him hit, what, two snipes, I think? One was in a position it didn't really matter when he was trying to clutch up in the 1v3. And maybe one in an early round situation for the most part. Their bread and butter. Got our X with the sniper in search and destroy. Didn't matter. Yeah, and I, I think maybe this is one of those things where the, the teams were prepared for minnesota right i mean we talked about a strong map today but dallas is able to beat them and in a pretty dominant fashion and now florida does the same thing so maybe this is just one of those maps that minnesota is gonna have to look at watch these two vod's and try to switch some things up
Yeah, and they, they tried to switch it up with him taking off of the sniper, but it, it seemed to be too late, right? It's already 2-5, 2-4 when that starts to happen. And when you, you're so used to doing what you do that works well, like you stick with what works, but at some point in that map, they had to make the decision to try something else, and it just seems like it was too little too late. But as it sits, home series final here for Dallas. It is 1-1 Florida, Minnesota. It's Domination coming up after this quick break. Clean five man wipe. Here comes Silly. Get him, Silly. The team making the play. Alex with the triple. He's the man of the moment, and he's not slowing down. It's all Minnesota in the kill feed. Rocker goes huge. Are you kidding? The Rocker are lighting up. Call of Duty League is brought to you by Metro by T-Mobile. Stay connected to what matters most with the best value in wireless. Scuff Gaming, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. Hello and welcome back to CDL Sunday, our home series final tied up at 1-1. Before we get into the map three domination, we're going to take a look at the U.S. Army tactical play. And Joe, it was Havoc making the play with a sniper. Yeah, I mean, this guy was sort of doing it all on this map, right? Just switching it up. This round, he brings out the snipe. Other rounds, he's running in map behind his smokes. Beautifully done from Havoc. We, we've known this is the type of player that he can be. And it feels like he's hitting it right now. How tough is that to deal with? Uh, you know, as as the opposition, when you just you have no idea what a particular player like Havoc's going to be doing. 
Yeah, I think it just makes it tough when he's in the form that he is right now, right? Like you just have to play patiently, try to shut him down, use your nades, use your tacticals. But yeah, it's one of those things like, how do you deal with a sniper that's not missing, right? Like, how do you? you, you there's nothing really you can do besides use your nades and force him to take those shots because, you know, we saw it with like God or X, even after he is hitting the shots, if he's in a tough situation, they're able to handle it. So yeah, I mean, Havoc, he, we, we know he can kind of do it all. We saw it there. Yeah, yeah, you have to use your teamwork, use those nades. It's it's uh, it's tough to deal with them when he's shooting like that. All right. Well, I know, another question for you, though, with, with regards to Pharaoh, right? Like, we know Bristini mm -hmm. out, Pharaoh in. Uh, Pharaoh's been an MVP at an event. We know he's capable of, but, like, how important do you think he is right now to this team? What's he doing for them? Well, I, I think you heard it in the interview between Lottie and Mox. Like Mox just said, he's making this game fun to play. He's bringing a certain energy, a certain motivation to this team. And I just think that's because, like like we talked about, Farrell was on a pro team, was on one of the better pro teams, was winning championships. Then he had a bit of a rough patch. So for him to get back into this position, I think he's just motivated. Something, and I think something. he's bringing that motivation... To the rest of his team. Well, I would think, and this isn't knocks Brissini at all, but they're coming from very different things. Like, Brissini's coming off a world championship, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Farrell could not be coming from a different situation. So, yeah, there's got to be a different kind of fire there, I would think. In terms of, like, I'm sure, like, effort, like, he's probably bringing, who, like, so much to scrims and to practice, like, just trying to get these guys on point. Well, Farrell's POV now, as he finds one outside a restaurant. Everyone vying for B side control. It's a mess around the point, but it's Pharaoh still standing. Yeah, he goes for the knife. And Silly not able to hit the shots. Pharaoh couldn't hit the reload, so just goes up, gives him the butter knife. Able to give him the knife. Mox, Skies, Frosty. They're trying to flip it. They want control of Charlie. And they're able to get it. And now Minnesota, they have no flag right now. This guy's just protecting the middle of the street. He knows where they can spawn. Havoc inside a restaurant. He's just going to go up top. I think one player did spot him. That was his team from Minnesota trying to work his way towards the Florida base. But Havoc just getting naded out. Alex is able to deal with him. But a nice flip from Florida and just so many kills in a row. Just like we were sawing in that hard point. Yeah, they've had uh, their fair share of crazy maps here as well. That's not the same time, right? That yeah. <laughs> the, the one-point win. Who's that against Optic, right? Optic, yep. Yeah. So no strangers to this map. Uh, let me just pull up this. Uh, what were they on map three? So when you talk about domination on Petro, it's two one from Minnesota. Florida, okay. five and two. Oh, they play a lot. A lot of repetitions. <laughs> a lot of reps. And... I mean, we talk a lot about domination, and you just sort of all have to be on point. What is the team's strategy? What are we going to do when we spawn here? And I think if you've played it seven times in official matches, you, you know kind of exactly how you want to play it. Minnesota couldn't get anything rolling on the map to search and destroy. They're getting throttled early in this domination, but the cops got to be on point. Let's go to an Astro Gaming listen in with your Minnesota Rocker. Yeah. Uh, he pushed in, he pushed in, he went back up to line, Pharaoh right now. Get wall, get wall. Get kit, yo, listen, get kit, get kit. Nice. I'm back in the I'm on water. Water, water, water. Water, 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 Line, line, up. Line really weak. Nice. Stop hazard, stop hazard, one's deep water, one deep water, one deep water, one deep water, me. Nate has a fuck, I'm going to water, I'm water, I'm Yo, make sure you stay Water got me, water got me. He's sitting, uh, boot in, boot in. Water boot in, water boot in. I'm gonna go, eh? That's a water side. Top, top balance, top balance. Top balance, top balance. It's okay. Top balance, top balance. Water, top balance. No, uh, double dog. Go on top of it, one more top balance as well. Back up, back up. 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 Back up.
Yeah, I think I'm one shot. Nice, nice. Barrel's still in kitchen. Oh, what's up, kitchen? There's two by the I spawn apartments. They're heading right. And one is on your blue van. He pushed up. He pushed up the court. I need a blue court. I need a blue court. They're gonna be on it. They're gonna be on it. Be close. Tracks. A double door havoc. I'll tell you what I heard there, Joe. Frustration? Yeah. Yeah. Mutineers absolutely have them frustrated. Also, Mox is four and two with four minutes of gameplay. Yeah, he's just defending C. Yeah, you no, I know, I know, I know. It's just a wild, it's a wild stat line, right? He's just hanging out, bro. He's just hanging out. But no wonder yeah, you're frustrated. He's like, you guys are doing great. Assault. Hey, you guys hear me from back there? Yeah, he's, he's a cheerleader right now, just cheering on the squad. But uh, yeah, assault three and nine. It seems four and 11. So you have like your main AR and your main entry guy not really finding much success. Like they are getting hammered. Like this is one of those score lines where it feels like it might be over in the first half. That was well, such I mean, it was that flip right Indiana. away that that we watched when you know with the Pharaoh knife right after that They get three four dead and they just go they fly to see they're able to flip them out And then since that point this has been the only time Minnesota has been able to work their way up mid-map They finally got some kills. It's five dead, but guess what Clint? It's just way too late and we're about to go to halftime and this is a dominant First round yeah. for the Florida Mutineers. Some days, or sometimes, Joe, uh, five dead with five seconds to go in a game could be a very big thing. Uh, they're not the game. <laughs> it's just, it, uh, you finally make the play when it doesn't even matter. Maybe it's a difference of a point or two, but that is a 90 to 59 half. They're up 31. Uh, that was just truly, truly spectacular from the Mutineers. They look so strong here, and it's their most played dom. Yeah, and I, I mean, how many times have you and I watched this match, right? Like, typically it is chaos, but it just felt like Florida, I mean, they didn't allow Minnesota to give up middle of the map. Like, they had them trapped that game for so long. They were able to get that neutral. Their BC hold was so strong, and guess who's spawning on the C side? It's Florida Mutineers once again. Three, go down for the Minnesota Rocker. Got our is trying to stay up after he finds a double, but... We talked about it yesterday. We talked about it every day. Havy's playing with the knife, trying to find the second one. You think he's having some fun? Come on in to restaurant to the butcher of Petrograd. It's Havoc. Just looking to turn a rocker into some type of meat. He keeps it going. A five spree off the get go. B now secured by Mox. A good opening yet again from Mutineers. And Pharaoh, it, we talked about coming into this 19 and 10. It, and I just love what they did off the start. Even after they get three dead, Havoc, he's just getting restaurant control. They don't they don't need the B flag. They still have the lead. It, they can let it be neutral. They just require map position. Then after that, Mox works his way up. They're able to find that kill. Minnesota, they do get the neutral. Can they find a cap? They can. And Assault. Finally starting to heat up, but guess who's protecting C? It's Mr. Mox. Is this the same thing we saw in the Dom yesterday, right? Where Mox kind of playing that main AR role and Skies flying around with the MP5? Well, we'll, we'll have to check Skies what, what he's rocking with uh, when we can. Pretty sure Frosty at least right the last now. time I saw him, he had yeah, MP5 so MP5. Hand. Yeah, so maybe this is just something they're doing on Dom, right? They just want Mox to protect one flag like he's doing with C. Before they're going to take A, now they're trying to get the neutral at B. One positive from Rocker is they haven't let the get out to much more than it was, but now it's terrifying. Because now it's about to be a three cap, all five drop, and this is the perfect situation you want if you're Look at this here. trap. Look at the minimap. This is exactly what you want if you're learning to play this. You want a team spawning bottom like that and three cap control. They put the game away here. Every five seconds that go by just deeper, buried underground, go the Rocker. They're getting rocked, Joe, in map three. Yeah, this was just a beautiful Petrograd by the Florida Mutineers. I, I think pro teams should should watch this one. Just the way they played it, the way they worked around the map. And yeah, that's why they have a 50-point lead in Minnesota. They were able to take us to a game five in our last home series final in Los Angeles. Can they do it again here in our Dallas home series final? We'll have to wait and find out. But what is map four? I know you, know you sent me the first three games, but... Uh, I believe it's Gunrunner. We'll say gun, gun runner. Gun runner. Uh, I think Gunrunner map four, I believe. Oh, yeah, so Gunrunner. So you're looking at Minnesota, who's one in three. But a few, three of those losses are to Atlanta and Chicago. 
in Paris. So three very solid teams in Florida, one and one. And the only team they've beaten is Gorillas and lost once to Chicago. So, so not the most telling. I mean, you gotta feel good. Not the most telling. Yeah, stats. not the most telling, but I think you gotta feel pretty good if you're a Mutineers fan. Well, Joe, we're gonna hang out for 90 seconds because this is done. Well, that's what I was asking you to just, let's, you know, talk about gun runner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, that is just, that is done. I'll try to see it from our, uh, our, our buddy or Tap there now that we can get anything just about the next map. Uh, anything additional, maybe, or some kind of hard point stats for the individual players. Just, now it is just a matter of time before we get to that map for what the textbook map it has been for Mutineers. It's not a crazy draw scenario, which they get to one point one. It's not a crazy comeback. It is domination from the get go. As Frosty continues to push through. He's going to go ahead and try to neutral A. Just add his oh, this is, yeah, no, this is the best part. You know, when you're a pro player in a pro match, you can just sort of hang out, maybe stab pad a little bit, you know. To take a look. Fair was 35 and 15. What? 35. Can we just hang out with Farrah's point of view? I want to see how twisted my man is. I F3, feel, F3. I feel like, uh, I mean, the only person I can think about in this map, in this mode, that's had a dom like that is like Inboy. Like, he's had some crazy performances from that standpoint on this map and mode. Pharaoh, though, putting up one of the better ones we've seen all year. 35 and 15. Pharaoh is twisted. I thought he was about to get that second win, too, against Connor X to it at the high ground. Yeah, I did too. Moss is sitting at a cool 15 and 7. He had 22 in a ride. That was one of the easiest maps in the world, I think, for him. He was just hanging out. Pharaoh basically has more kills than like any two players of Rocker combined. Not quite, just about. Like, that is the impact he made from a slang standpoint. 194, 117. After Rocker win map one, it's back to back for the Mutineers. Now, one map away from their first win. Man, who, I, I mean, they did in Atlanta, right? So at this point, it should be no surprise. The level that this team can play on. It just feels like it is a surprise, though, right? Just I, We didn't expect this whatsoever coming into this. You had what? You had Dallas. You had Minnesota. You had Chicago. Everyone thought it was to be one of those three teams, and it still could be Minnesota. Yeah. Just feels like the way Florida's playing right now with the way they're slaying. I, I just don't know if Minnesota's going to be able to do it. Well, you know me. I'm a, I'm a big advocate of uh, talent over all else and i know that's not always true and i know it's not everything yeah. but i've always been that way like i just want to see a stack squad whether it's in a, any esport any sport like put the talent together and just make that work and you have you have the talent with skies and now the way frosty is playing pharaoh's none real talent havoc's playing some of the best call of duty of his life and mox i mean if he's the one guy that can get comfortable on this team which we haven't seen much all year they are a force to be reckoned with. Like they are a stack, stack squad. And yes, it's not necessarily household names. Like when you think of, you know, top 10 players and top 10 talents, like I know it's not household names, but they are good, man. They are good, good players. And I hope this becomes more, more the norm and not the outlier. Yeah, I think that there was an interesting stat. I, I got to read it. It was the like their, their records with Pharaoh. So with the Pharaoh proceeds, which they're seven and three in hard point, one in six in search and three and three in Dom. So their hard point's been their best game mode ever since this switch uh, and that's where we're going it's funny though because if you told me like what where i would expect Pharaoh to make an impact it'd probably be search but so well <laughs> you, we saw they were able to win it right yeah, yeah, like yeah. they've won a few today uh and i just think search takes a little bit more time hard point is something they're scrimming all this and we always talk about that what's the first game mode teams you typically figure out is that hard point and they've done that oh. so We'll see if they close it. Yeah, and usually, I, I mean, if you are a good hardpoint team, which seven, seven and three is a very good hardpoint team, if you're winning at that rate, you're gonna make some runs in tournaments. Like you're, you're going to. It's yeah. maps one and four. More often than not, you're gonna see two. If you're playing lights out in that mode, you've got a chance in basically every single series. You can't say that about a strong dom team. You can't say that about a strong search team with it being the map five. But hardpoint, like a strong hardpoint team, can. And do just about anything and uh that's what they're doing right now and when the search is clicking as well like it has been today you got a chance to win joe well piccadilly search has been has been wrong we'll, yeah. we'll see if when we <laughs> get to the petro if that's wrong but minnesota has to get us there but they they felt the pressure before they they were just in a grand they were just in a final a home series final they were down to one that's when that epic hack the yard uh map happened so these guys know it's time to step up they want to win so so bad we know that
how important do you think it is that I know it's very different versus being on an actual main stage and the, you know, the quote unquote online main stage that we have right now due to the current issues going on around the world. But how, how important is it that they've been to a final uh, Florida have seen a final? I think it's important, right? I, I just think they're all battle tested. Um, I, I mean, but you would probably say that they've all been to a final before that as well. They all know what it feels like. I mean, you talk about Mox and in, in havoc last year, you know, with Genji, whether they get to two finals, they weren't able to capture it. They get to another one this year, they weren't able to capture it. So the same thing with Minnesota, you know, Skies and Mox, they want this so, so bad. They absolutely do. Yeah, there's there's no lack of uh, desperation or need for this win as we get right into Gunrunner. I've loved it today. This is what, this has been, I know, guys, I know there's been some bumps in the road Friday and Saturday. I know there were delays. I know we were struggling to get into things, working through, smooth. working through the new tech, working through some, uh, you know, in-game stuff, just get everything rolling smoothly. But today has been so smooth, and I hope you've been enjoying uh, the CDL Sunday broadcast because this has been, this has been fun to cast. This has been two fantastic teams showing what they're made of. And now the only question for me in Minnesota to get us to the map five. Off we go. The, okay, yeah, you look at a map like Gunrunner. I think this is when you look at the your your double A's, right? This is when you look at Alex and the team. Can they step up? Those submachine gun players. Can they slow down Havoc? Can they slow down Pharaoh? And, uh, off that start, <laughs> I don't know if they can. <laughs> not the best start uh, to my question. Not the best start, but Rocker really putting a lot of emphasis into these right side spawns for Neck. You still have Havoc sort of in a sneaky position to maybe make some kind of play, but he's going to be in a 1v2 as he pushes through. But right now, if you're being here, you have to get all this time. Rocker puts so much emphasis into getting it back. They wrap three players back and think to try and find Havoc that it was a lot of free time, at least for a moment there, for you here. So they put 18 up on the board before they are cleared out. Now with 20 seconds remaining, you think they're going to start to think about pushing through. And it's Route Man himself trying to hit the routes. Did he find yeah, his he timing? Found it. He, he found it. Yeah, through. he found the timing. I don't think it seems spotted him. He got it. They flipped the spawns again. Frosty spawns right there. He's able to do it again. Havoc. Havoc. He pops dead silence and able to sneak through the waters. And now Minnesota has to try to wrap back. And now they know as Frosty's able to find that kill. Pharaoh set up up top. Silly's the last member on this side of the map, and there is the break. If I made a list of 50 players coming into this weekend that I thought would make this sneaky play on rotation, the patience to set it up, I don't know if Havoc's on it <laughs> right now. He's he, by the bottom of the list. Yeah. <laughs> but he is doing it over and over again, the heads-up plays. And I don't know if it's just all on him or if it's a shot caller on the team that's pushing it through, but whatever it is, it's working great, unfortunately, well, though. That is uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, for well, them. It, just, yeah. They just get smoked off the point as Rocker get all five and they get in. So everything we just hyped up about the early rotation for Mutineers and the great play pretty much evaporated. Yeah, great play by Havoc, but uh, better play by the entire team of Minnesota to just break right in. I guess the one good thing for Florida, you didn't start on that side, right? You still have a lead when we're we're rotating over to Minecart. So you, you'll take the small W, but we'll see how that imp impacts the game later on. As Mosh trying to get his team set up. Well, I mentioned this a little bit ago. I'm kind of curious if there's a shot caller that's kind of helping Havoc with these rotations or if he's leading the way and making these heads up plays. We already heard the comps from the Rocker side. Let's go to an Astro Gaming listening with the floor. I keep going, keep talking, keep talking. Pinch, 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 Judd. In hell, guys. Nice. Damn, shit, I'm on top. Nice, I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to do. He could have got far, but I don't think he could have. Actually, one's a new, one's a new. He just flashed me. No, I'm pushing out, pushing out, pushing out. No, I got it, I got it, I got it. Not boulder. He didn't go boulder. Still left, still left. Yeah, they're definitely on new. I'm dead. I got the new, I got the new, I got the new, One's on new, I think. There'd be eight on there. Watch the old push, watch push. Hold, Aeson. One's old, 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 Back right, right, right. One shot, absolute free kill, free kill. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm gonna play old. I'm gonna go back in here. 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 I'm gonna go back in here
Get, I gave him left, someone get it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cover Kree. Helping you middle. One more open, one top open. They know, they know. Put pressure on this. Put pressure on this. Put pressure on this. Nice, I'm watching left, I'm watching left. Left, left. I'm watching left. Yeah, watch. I am. I'm watching left. Dead left, dead left. I'm watching 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 left. Get right, get right, yeah, get left, get left. It's a nice lead for mutineers. Yeah. What's right, your takeaway right, from the listening? Nice. Yeah, I mean, he, I don't think he's the loudest middle, one, but he has a very distinct voice, and that's Havoc. And he's making a few play calls, like, hey, let's put some pressure on the hill. Let's focus on this rotation. We talked about him being the route man. He's also given some great comms inside this team. That's why they have a 50-point yeah. lead. That's why I have this early rotation over to Warehouse. So there, there was a lot of good small talk between the players and call-outs, but I think all the calls I heard that kept telling the team what to do and what the focus on came from Havoc. At least I asked what I heard in that listening. So, uh, impressive stuff from Havoc in this final. As they're looking to put away Rocker. Rocker have to muster up something in these next couple of minutes. Mutineers looking to blow this game wide open. It's another knife kill for the Mutineers. They found two or three in the last map as well. Frosty continues. Keeps on cutting. Trying to make the play inside water, put the pressure on. But as you said, you see Minnesota, they're controlling this side of the map. And you have to feel like the next two hills just have to be big for them if they want to claw their way back into this one. They have to try to earn some time. They have to try to rotate towards the depot side. They're doing a good job right now. But can they do it for another two minutes? That's the big question. They get taken down off hill, but you see the spawns coming in. They keep them out. Right side. They still have the right side, but Mutineers are the ones racking up the time and every second. You gotta feel like a bit of a dagger just getting deeper into the heart of Rocker. Now they clear him out of the hard point. They'll stop them at 145 for now. We take a look at the overall stats. Silly struggling a bit. This one 11 to 19. We'll see if he can turn it around over the rest of the I mean, you're gonna, someone's going to be struggling, right, if you're down 90 points. Yeah, that was just the only stat that kind of stood out, I guess, that you know, everyone else kind of around here. But this has to be the hold. I think Minnesota, they want to get back into this one. This has to be a 40, 50-point addition well, that inside time, Havoc, this depot. Havoc tried to sneak through again. That time he got picked up. Alex was able to cut him down. Inside the point will be Assault. Rocker looking to rally this back. They get all this time, and they're still down 50 or 60 points. But now comes the pinch but to it's the glass. Better. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's much better. better. Than, better, better than 100. Barrel through the Barrel. back. The rest of the team up through the front. Front. He'll get picked up. It's a four-man swarm through the front side of the point. Rockers seem to still be able to hold on to this gel. A bit of a contest for Mutineers for a moment, but there's the hold. Rocker get it done. Yeah, I guess the good thing for, like, Skies and Pharaoh, because they're able to find a few kills, you'll see the contest at least come in, right? So it doesn't allow Minnesota to work up those trains and get a lot of map position because those kills came in. But when it's all said and done, they should get up to about 105, 110 points. This guy's is still putting pressure on, and he actually made this rough that a bit. So, solid job by Skies, but will that hurt them on rotation? Mox trying to stay up, but he's going to have a few Minnesota players to deal with, and one's pinching him. That's silly. Number five going all the way around. He's around that eight down flag right now. I don't know if he's there. Okay, so he just gets taken down. All the kills go through for the Mutineers. Unfortunately, some friendly fire in that mix as well. Who's not waiting on the pinch? I think it's Frosty that's waiting to try and make the play. Try and collapse. He's just lurking around mid-map, trying to make sure they can't continue to reinforce that easily. And he's just, you know, letting the air know that he can punch things. Yeah, so sometimes you're just mashing that melee button. There's the pinch. Right, and well, There's the pinch. He's able to go on that pinch, able to lock things down, and Minecart has been great so far for Florida. They've already, what, got 30 points. There's still 20 seconds yeah, and, left. And Frosty, I mean, he gets three kills throughout that sequence, but he stayed alive for, what, the first 30, 35 seconds at that point. And while he's yep. there mid-mapper towards Ventrum, they have to worry about him. They can't just focus on headbutting the hard point because they never know when he's going to pounce. He finds a good timing. He pounces, and now it's a 100-point lead for Florida. They are lights out, Joe. Yeah, it's just difficult when we talk about this map. Like, you talk about... I know a lot of our main focus is on Warehouse and Depot, Hills 2 and 5. 
But when you talk about you only need 47 points, that first hill center platform and this one here at crates, you can fight for the garbage time. You don't have to worry about rotations because you have that 100 point lead. So you see Florida, they're just gonna put all their pressure on the hill right now. Like why not force Minnesota to have to make a tough decision? Plus they're slaying out the way they are. Just dominating, and it's Pharaoh again. It was 35 and 15 in the last map. Went off in the map one. A solid map here at plus five. He's got over a minute to go in the hard point as well. Objectively, Mox has been doing it. 90 seconds for him. Mox has been great in this series. I mean, we've been on him a little bit for his stats, maybe throughout the course of the weekend or the course of the year, but Mox has been great within this Boy, series. Yeah, I mean, what was one of the keys to victory? He had to play well on the, the yes, SMG factor, maps, right? and yes, he is. Factor. Yeah, 23 and 16 with 90 seconds in the hill. Please on rotation with Havoc. They are set up. This could be the game, the match, the weekend right here. Florida Mutineers looking to get their first home series win on the year just 10 points away. The last time they were here, they fell short. They had to go through Chicago both times to get here, and this time they might seal the deal right as they go to do it. The contest comes in, but now the victory lap. Florida Mutineers, your Dallas home series victors. They get it done, and what a performance it was from Florida, Joe. Nobody saw this coming. Hell no. I mean, the addition of Pharaoh. You see these guys getting fired up. Skies is out of his chair. Pharaoh's They're losing. Just so it. excited to capture that W. What a win. <laughs> and they just dominate that. The new guy, Pharaoh, played so, so well. Everybody, everybody had their moments. That is a convincing win. And now you just have to ask yourselves. Are they now the top four team in the world? I think you have to say they're in that mix I mean, of the top four. How do you four. say no? You have to. They how have do you say place. no? Yeah. They have a win. And for this team, how much better can they get? Like, do they have a chance to continually battle against the top dogs in this league as a special well, I, win, an impressive win? And you got to love to see it as a Florida fan. And I know we touch a lot on like Pristini and Faro, the different play styles they are. But the fact is, is when you get a second and a first with two different teammates, the core of this roster they know how they want to play. They know what they want to do. And I know we touch on it a lot with Minnesota, but they just stick to their game plan. It paid off this weekend. Yeah, I think on the other side of this, if you're Rocker, I mean, don't get down. Like This is that first step, right? This is your first final. You've been consistent. You keep improving. And you can look right over to Florida. They did it step by step as well. They fall short in their first final. The next yeah. one they get to, they're able to take. I think you can take a lot away from this weekend. If you're Rocker, you still look like a top team in the game. But here... Florida had your number, and uh, man, that was a that was a that was a great final. It it was like there were some close maps and some great moments, but it was a little bit more maybe a little more lopsided than I expected it to be. When you take a look at maps three and four, like Florida just yeah, destroyed four. them. Like, I, and, and have we seen Rocker get smoked? Yes, in LA, Optic 3-0 stopped them. Mm -hmm. Like Rocker never played the game before, so this isn't the first time we've seen Rocker kind of just fall apart and get stomped on. But I didn't think it was going to happen in that final, Joe. I didn't. And I know a lot of the times when we touch about Minnesota, it's around map vetoes. And I think Florida, I, I'm going to give props to Atura, their coach, uh, the way they play these map vetoes, right? Because you bring in that Piccadilly, you, you just saw Minnesota lose it. You just won it, right? So that that's that's a good map for you today. Petro, obviously they are very comfortable on it, how many times they've played it. And then you force Minnesota on that gunrunner hard point and... Yeah, they're, they're able to take care of business. So great vetoes out of, out of Florida. Well, Joe, it's, uh, it, it's been a pleasure, man. It's exciting to be back casting again. We we'll had see you that, in a few we weeks, had that baby. Break. We've got so many, uh, you know, more tournaments to come. But I just want to say to the fans and everybody, we're excited to be back. Like the CDL, the CDL's back. It's, it's been a blast. But we still have our desk to break stuff down and kind of talk about the future of what's going to be going on with the CDL. But what a home series final it was. We're happy to be back, man. We love this stuff. Call of Duty is the best. We'll be right back.